What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more iOS 17.5 features and changes. We're gonna talk about Apple's new open source AI models, the death of fine woven cases, a crazy AirTag story, and more. And as always, if you want to stay in the loop of everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want these videos and more news in a written format, check out the Apple Den newsletter. I'll leave that link down below. Let's start with Apple Apple's new AI models that were just revealed this week that could be used in iOS 18. So this is called Open Elm or Open Source Efficient Language Models. And this is a new set of eight small LLMs that are designed to run on device instead of through the cloud. And as you know, the words Apple and open source are almost never in the same sentence. So it was pretty interesting this week to see Apple actually publish these LLMs or Open Elm on Hugging Face, which is a machine learning community. So if you look at the white paper, you can see that four of the eight models were pre-trained using CoreNet, which is the library Apple used to train the models. And that was also open sourced with this PDF white paper. And then the other four are instruction tuned models. And like I said, these are small models with parameter sizes of 270 million, 450 million, 1.1 billion, and 3 billion. And these small models are the new trend right now. A lot of companies are releasing small LLM models to run on device instead of reaching out to the cloud to get information. And this kind of solidifies what we've been hearing for a while now that the iOS 18 AI features are going to be on device, most mostly on device. Like Apple's not going to have an LLM in iOS 18 that's going to use cloud infrastructure. And that aligns with Apple's whole goal and like their whole thesis right now when it comes to software. And that is keeping your data secure and private. And there's no better way to keep your data secure and private than it's staying on device at all times and never leaving your device. We also saw news this week that Apple is working with TSMC to develop an in-house AI server processor. And this processor is apparently going to be manufactured using TSMC's three nanometer node. They're aiming for mass production by the second half of next year. And of course, we also have to talk about the fact that Apple acquired another AI company. So as you guys know, Apple acquired the most AI companies out of any tech company period in 2023. It was over 30 AI startups, and they also just secured Data Collab, which is a Paris-based AI startup that specializes in data compression and image analysis. And this company focuses on low power, high efficiency, deep learning, algorithms that run on a device, which again is what exactly what Apple plans to do with iOS 18 and their AI. Okay, so that's the last time I'm going to mention AI in this video. So let's move on to iPadOS 18, because one of the biggest features that could be coming in iPadOS 18 is a calculator application. Yes, finally. So this news comes from Mac Rumors, who cites a source familiar with the matter, and they said that Apple is finally planning a calculator app for the iPad over 14 years after launching the device. And it looks like this is not going to be limited to just the iPad Pros. It's gonna be on all iPads, so hallelujah. Now, before we talk about iOS 17.5, I wanted to just take a moment to ask you guys, what is your battery health on your iPhone? Because there seems to be a new, I don't want to call it epidemic. I'm not trying to get, you know, clickbaity and dramatic here on you guys, but it seems like almost everybody I've seen and I've talked to has issues with their battery health dropping significantly, like more even than the iPhone 14 Pro, which was the worst I'd ever seen personally. Now, I don't think the iPhone 15 and the battery health, battery life, you know, situation is as bad as it was last year. I do not think that at all, but I have recently over the past month or so started noticing a lot of people have dramatic drops in their battery health myself included. I actually posted this over on X recently this week, and you can see that my battery health has gone down quite a bit. And of course, I would attribute a lot of that to the heat. It has started to get hotter lately. So heat is obviously the number one enemy of these lithium ion batteries. So that could be a reason. Also, if you wear a case with the heat, that's like the worst case scenario. That's why lately I've just been rocking my phone without a case. But I just wanted to ask you guys real quickly, what is your battery health? Let me know in a comment down below. And of course, make sure to leave your device and the cycle count as well if you have an iPhone 15 series. All right, so now let's talk about iOS 17.5 because just this week we saw the release of beta 3 and it was really kind of underwhelming. There wasn't really much going on. I shouldn't say underwhelming because this is a 0.5 update, a third beta of a 0.5. You can't really expect too many additional changes at this point in the release cycle from Apple. A lot of the changes that Apple has planned are gonna be in iOS 18, but nonetheless, 
there was really only one change and it had to do with the eSIM. So nothing much to talk about with beta three specifically, but I did just want to touch on a few things with iOS 17.5 and also give you guys an update on how the software has been running for the past few days or half the week, I should say. So first off, if we head into the news application and go to the following tab and then go to puzzles, you will notice that if I go to quartiles now, I actually purchased Apple News Plus. Finally, I had a trial for a while, but I finally purchased it mainly just for these videos. But you can see this is what the quartiles game looks like. And you can select a tile to get started. If you tap the three dots up in the top right hand corner, there are some changes here as well. So you can go into rankings right here and it will show you the rankings. And of course, we do have the leaderboard over here as well, where you can see the global and the friendly leaderboard for not just quartiles, but also for crossword and crossword mini. And if you head into the sports tab, you can see that we have a new pop up there that says get more coverage, tap scoreboards for more information about any game. So if we tap on that right there, it will just show us more information here, basically just an ad to watch the game and Apple TV. I'm not sure why we don't have Apple news linking up with the sports application. I'm assuming that will come with iOS 18. I feel like they should be integrated by now. And then also in 17.5, if we head into the settings and go to news right here and then go down to news news plus puzzles, you can see that we do have the toggle for game centers. If you want to turn off those settings that I talked about, or those features I talked about with the leaderboards and everything related to game center, you can go ahead and turn that off. And now when you go back there and go into this section, you will not see anything show up for when you tap on the leaderboards. It just says turn on game center and settings to see how you rank. And then I talked about this a lot last week, but in case you missed it, we do have a new app installation section and settings. If you are in the EU and you download Load and install a third party app store from Safari, which just became a thing. It just became a possibility with iOS 17.5 beta 2, but Alt Store did just come out just after that. So that is what it looks like. If you go ahead and install that, you will have that new section here inside your settings underneath of app store. Now I talked about the battery health earlier in the video, but I also want to remind you guys that the new iPads are likely going to see the cycle count and the whole battery health section that we have on the iPhone 15s with the release of iPad OS 17.5. So we saw this in the code and it's looking like the iPads, at least one of the iPads, it's probably going to be both the iPad air and iPad Pro will have this battery health section, presumably showing the cycle count as well for the iPads, which would be a first. Now, when it comes to the performance in iOS 17.5 beta three, aside from that really annoying bug down there where you see search, you just did it right there on the home screen. Aside from that little jittery bug that drives me crazy, I know you can turn that off, but you know, it's just a bug I wanna show you guys. Aside from that, I've really had no issues with 17.5 beta three. I mean, even the issues I had previously in the files application related to to, you know, uh, marking up PDFs that has been fixed with beta three and really any other minor issues or inconveniences I've had have been fixed here with beta three. And I've really not seen any negative reviews when it comes to the performance either. Now I did run a fresh Geekbench test here and we can see we scored a 2946 and a 72 52. So that did score higher than our initial run, which was just after the software release. So that's not too surprising, but you can see that the single core is higher than it's been in a while. So we had on April 12th, we did have a slightly higher score there, but for the multi-core, it was very high at, uh, at 72. 52, which was one of the highest recently, aside from what we scored there on April 16th. And then when it comes to the battery life, battery life has also been excellent here on 17.5 beta three. I've had no complaints really with battery life at all since beta one. Beta one is really where I had the only issue with battery life and battery drain. But so far, if we look at my last 10 days, really no issues here with battery life. It actually seems to be a little bit better than beta two, but I wouldn't really, you know, I'm not gonna claim that. I think it's about the same as beta two and really it's too early to tell how battery life is even in the first week of usage. I mean, there are times where I can notice, you know, a battery change right away within the first day or two, but it's pretty rare. It doesn't happen very often. So battery life feels about the same as beta two, maybe slightly better, but you know, just, just assume that it's going to be the same as beta two, at least for me on my 15 pro max, uh, both 15 pro max is here. Okay. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next week is going to be the final week of April. So April 29th is going to be Monday. I would expect to see beta four next Tuesday on April 30th. Now there were some people thinking that we might get an RC next week, but I, I don't think so I think we're going to see a beta four next week and then an RC the following week after the Apple event. 
So the Apple event is gonna be on May 7th. So two weeks from now, less than two weeks from now, we're gonna see the new iPads revealed. And usually when we see the new products release is when Apple releases official software. So if we get the announcement on the 7th, they're probably gonna go up for pre-order that Friday and they'll probably be released the following Friday. That's typically how Apple rolls with these product releases. So that means that the week of May 13th is when we should see iOS 17.5, iPadOS 17.5, and all of the other software gets released to the public. But if Apple decides to release the products earlier than expected, then of course we'll see 17.5, whatever the week is that we see those new products actually launch, not just the announcement. And then after iOS 17.5 will be iOS 17.6 and so on. But of course, all eyes are gonna be on iOS 18, which is going to be unveiled and released on Monday, June 10th. So that's going to be an exciting time. Of course, I will be live streaming that event here on YouTube and we'll all you know talk about the new features and changes but that is what apple's focus is on right now and i think all of our focus is on ios 18 at this point as well okay so now let's move on to more apple news that we saw this week so let's talk about the apple event because we just saw a surprise reveal of Apple's May event. So we heard for months that Apple was not going to be hosting an event, that it was very unlikely that Apple was going to be hosting an event, but they're hosting an event for the new iPads and it's called Let Loose. So I made a full video detailing everything to expect from this event. So if you missed that, I will leave it linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But if you did miss that, we are expecting to see a new Apple Pencil, M3 iPad Air, and M3 iPad Pro. Now, the only thing that has changed since I made that video is that the M3 iPad Air, the 12.9 inch model, which is a first, we've never seen more than one size of the iPad Air, that is no longer expected to see a mini LED display. So it looks like it's gonna go back to using LCD just like the 11 inch model. So iPad Air, LCD displays, iPad Pro OLED displays. And keep in mind, it's been over 550 days since any iPad has been refreshed. We went through all of 2023 without any iPads being released. So I would expect a lot of hype and honestly, probably pretty good sales for both of these iPads as well, especially the iPad Pro, since we're gonna see some major changes to that product. Okay, so now we need to talk about the fine woven cases. So if you guys have had a fine woven Apple case or any type of accessory that is fine woven, please let me know in a comment down below if it has held up over time, if it has stood the test of time, because almost everybody I've talked to that has a fine woven case hates it. After a year, it's just deteriorating and it just looks terrible. And it looks like Apple knows that because we just saw a report this week that says Apple has stopped production of all fine woven accessories. Now it looks like they are set to release one final round of accessories, likely just gonna show off new colors before the material is gone for good. And this report says that Apple might move on to another non-leather material for its premium accessories in the future. So I am not surprised by this. I don't think anybody should be surprised by this because there was never really much good press about the fine woven accessories especially the cases but i would expect apple to move on to a new uh, you know a, a new material that's not trying to mimic leather i would expect to see that and it's going to be interesting to see if we see that this year or if we see that you know maybe in the spring of next year so do you guys remember this right there that is my Apple Vision Pro. I've honestly not used it very much in the past month, and I'll talk about that here in a moment. But the reason we bring that up is because this week we saw news that the Apple Vision Pro is not selling as well, and it doesn't have as much demand as Apple had hoped. I don't think anybody is surprised by that, but according to Bloomberg, demand for in-store demos is way down, and the people who do book appointments for those in-store demos often do not show up. And the sales have also cooled off. They've gone from, quote, a couple of units a day to just a handful in a whole week. And to that, I don't think anybody can say they were surprised. This is a niche product. Most of the people who are going to buy it at all bought it in the first week or the first month. At this point, I think everybody who wanted to buy it has pretty much already bought it. But anyways, this continues because Ming-Chi Kuo reports that Apple has cut its 2024 Vision Pro shipments to 400 to 450,000 units. Now here's where it gets a little bit confusing and interesting because Ming-Chi Kuo contradicts himself because he says that the market consensus was 700 to 800,000 units, but that contradicts pretty much everybody else's report in the industry, even his, because in January, he said that Apple's goal was 500,000 
500,000 units. And plus, we heard several reports that production constraints would lead to less than 500,000 units total in 2024. So I'm not really sure where he got this 700 to 800K number from. So it doesn't really seem like a drastic production cut from Apple here. It just seems like kind of a maybe misunderstanding on Ming-Chi Kuo's end in terms of the numbers and the consensus. But nonetheless, Apple is adjusting its headset roadmap, and he says that there may not be a new Vision Pro model in 2025 like they originally planned. And they're expected to take on a conservative view of demand when the Vision Pro launches in other countries. And like I said at the top of this story, I've not really used my Vision Pro very much lately. I mean, I use it for movies all the time, like anytime I want to relax and watch a movie, which is maybe like once a week, if that. But I really don't find myself using it for work very much. I just find it cumbersome and it takes too long to set everything up. And it's just annoying. I have to worry about the battery life all the time. There's just too much going on that splits my focus. And it's not just simple, like my computer that's always there, my phone that's always there and it's quick. I don't know. I, I, I just think Apple really needs to release Vision OS 2 and progress more with the applications and the software. Because keep in mind, this is still software and hardware version 1.0. I don't think anybody, any, any company, any product on planet Earth has ever been amazing on version 1.0. So this is going to get better over time. I do not think the Apple Vision Pro is a failure by any stretch of the imagination. I think Apple, you know, has big plans for this in terms of the software and applications, which at the end of the day is what's going to make a product succeed like this, like it does on the iPhone. Now, we also got news on the Apple Watch Series X this week. So we heard that this might be getting a new thinner motherboard material. So according to DigiTimes, the next gen Apple Watch will use a new resin coated copper or RCC motherboard design for a thinner logic board design and overall manufacturing improvements. And this is great news to hear because even the most minor changes to the internal components of an Apple Watch which is already a super miniature device, could be huge for Apple. I mean, the fact that they can fit more components in there because of that could be a big deal. And it's also going to slim down the profile of the Apple Watch as well. So I can't wait to see what Apple does for the 10 year anniversary of the Apple Watch. I hope it is like an X, you know, watch kind of like the iPhone X, iPhone 10 was for the iPhone, how it made a drastic change. And then finally, just as tradition, let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. And this time, a man in California walked out of his house one day and noticed that his car was was gone. So he did what any of us would do. He called the police. And after doing so, he remembered that he put an air tag in the trunk as a precaution. So he pulled up the Find My application and noticed that the car was nearby at a gas station. So his wife drove him up the street and they noticed his stolen BMW filling up at the gas station and the owner of the car approached the thief and confronted him, which side note for the 50th time, Never do this. It is not worth risking your life, especially when you've already contacted the police. Do not do this. This guy could have had a gun, could have shot him in the face dead right there just for approaching him like that. Just never, ever do that. If you ever get something stolen from you, if you ever get your property stolen, never approach the thief. You never know what their intentions are. Anyways, the thief denied that it was stolen, of course, until the man beeped the car with his extra key fob that he brought from home. And that's when the thief quickly fled the scene in the BMW, but... Since the thief is about as dumb as a rock, he not only left behind his wallet with his driver's license in it, but he also left drug paraphernalia at the scene. You cannot make this up. But once the man was arrested and the car was retrieved, it got even worse because it was discovered that the thief left the dash cam on all night. So you could see the exact locations that he took the car to. You can see him switching the license plates and you can even hear him bragging about stealing the car and planning to go back to steal the wife's car next. Oh, and by the way, when they looked at the man's license, the address was in their neighborhood. So this thief all along was a neighbor. Oh man, that is just crazy on so many levels and just shows you how dumb thieves like this are. But once again, the air tag saves the day. It could have cost this man his life, but it saved the day. And that's why we have it in this video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Apple Weekly. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next weekend's Apple Weekly episode. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.